Today I've got your first glimpse of AMD's 3rd Gen Ryzen, their RX 590 has been released, and we finally have some benchmarks with ray tracing enabled. So stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to GamerMelt. Today, the first of AMD's next generation Ryzen CPUs have been spotted on UserBench. The upcoming chip is part of AMD's ultra low power line for thin and light notebooks. And while it's really nothing of a big deal, in fact, the clocks and core count are identical to their last generation CPUs or, well, APUs. But of course, that can and should change by release. The main takeaway is really just that they're testing it, so their mobile lineup shouldn't be too far away. The question is whether it's built on Zen 2 or Zen Plus. Remember that the 2000 series ultra low power lineup was based on first generation Zen, but it had many features that would be coming to Zen Plus on desktop, so they went ahead and labeled it the second generation 2000 series. Hopefully this will be Zen 2, but with this potentially coming long before Zen 2 on desktop, there's a chance the timing will hold it back. Of course, stick to GamerMeld to find out. Next up for today, the RX 590 GPUs have officially been released, and subsequently, many have sold out. They'll have affiliate links in the description if you'd like to pick one up before you can't anymore. It won't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. As far as performance, the card seems to have around the expected 12% performance uptick that we'd expect from 14 nanometer to 12, thanks to higher clocks from the 580. That points to it squarely between a 1060 and 1070 in terms of average performance, though the 1060 seems to win in some highly optimized scenarios. Unfortunately, the RX 590 also burns more juice, which makes it a not so efficient card. Of course, one great value of the 590 is its 8 gigabytes of VRAM, which given the HD texture world of gaming today is a serious benefit to have. When it comes to pricing, they're mostly at that $279 price point that was recently leaked, and they come with three games. Now, what's really cool about the free games is that it extends to other RX products. You can get the same three free games with any Vega purchase, or you get to pick two of the three games with any RX 580 or RX 570 purchase. And I'll definitely say that the RX 580 is at a really great price point right now, with some coming just over $200. Add the two free games and I'd suggest no one pass this up. When it comes to the RX 590, if you aren't too concerned with power draw, it seems to be a pretty great mid-range GPU. And while it's not a generational step up above the 580, it's still something to get just a little more of that sweet FPS. Lastly for today, speaking of FPS, we finally have some actual numbers on how Nvidia's real-time ray tracing affects FPS in games. And it's not good. According to Tech Power Up's initial testing in Battlefield 5, the 1080p frames were, wait for it, cut in half. The RTX 2080 Ti itself, that's right, the $1200 GPU, got just over 60 FPS at 1080p. That definitely hurts, especially since Nvidia and monitor makers have been selling 4K HDR for years now. The proposition of spending what you could on a full PC just on the GPU for 60 FPS at 1080p is a tough pill to swallow. Of course, that is because ray tracing is so intense, but remember that there's dedicated cores to solving just this. Luckily, DICE did add different levels of ray tracing effects so you can turn things down for more frames, but I have little doubt that someone who purchased a 2080 Ti is going to be too happy about that. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Are you excited for ray tracing? Is it worth the cut in FPS? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out AMD's new deal on their RX and Vega line of GPUs. Check that out in the description. And as always, have a great day.